word, the four letter L word, and it's lust. It's not really love. So we got confused here now. There's a big confusion between mm -hmm. the two. Love in Islam is a required quality, and is it's one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorified and the exalted, that he says in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَالرَّحْمَةً From his miraculous signs is that he has created for you spouses, just like yourselves, and that he has placed between the two of you love and mercy. So these are qualities that we need to have, but at the same time, we need to put them in the proper perspective and understand it's not lust. It's not falling in love with the person's complexion and how handsome he looks or how beautiful and her body shape and things of that sort. Love is a quality that really, through the relationship with time, after truly getting the ability to know one another and having the relationship established on the right principles, that's something that's, that exists, but it's further nurtured and cultivated. So that it truly blossoms to what it needs to be through that relationship of marriage. Next point, some people might resort to what's called, I would, self-pleasure. We're living in the real world here. I mean, probably people have done this before, they're doing it today. But now to avoid some of these temptations, someone might end up turning to self-pleasure. I don't know if you can, I'm a little shy to bring up any other words. But, you know, address this. This is also something that someone might end up to uh, uh, treat this issue, this desire they have, but they might not go out and, you know, end up committing a fornication or hooking up uh, outside of the uh, way that the Creator wants them to do, but they might just start doing this to put off the marriage thing. It's kind of like a person seeking to treat symptoms and not looking to actually remedy the cure with a cure the origins of the issues at hand. Naturally, it's, 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 a, it's a need that both the man and the woman have, but looking to fulfill it and satisfy it through anything other than marriage, it's wrong, it's sinful. It's less of a sin than going out there and fornicating, but at the same time, it's not something that's really acceptable. One of the things that Allah mentions to us in the Quran, Whereas he says to us, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ إِبْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ And those who they guard the chastity of their genitals, except from their wives and those whom are of their possessions, whoever seeks a means or a method outside of that, then those are the transgressors. So this self-pleasure, or the M uh, word, mm -hmm. this is something that's not really acceptable. But there's also a problem with this that perhaps somebody doesn't look at. It's an addicting thing, mm -hmm. where someone who then feels that they don't really need the other, where they can take care of their own business, they don't need a man, they don't need a woman. You fall, kind of fall in love with yourself, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you say, I don't forget this, I'll just... Hang out with myself all the time. I mean, this is what can lead to, huh? Quite possibly. Pornography then? But what really happens is, and, and some people don't think about it, that it perverts your mind. Yeah. Because in order for somebody to get into that type of stuff, they need to be thinking on thing, about yeah. things. They need to be dwelling on stuff. And that's where the perversion really starts setting yeah. in. And so if this is something that a person then, because it's something that they're doing on their own, and they engage in this regularly, frequently, yeah. it corrupts them from within. Mm hmm and this opens up the doors for many other things that are very harmful. Yeah. Aside from hair growing on your palms and losing your eyesight. Yeah, this is okay. It's something bad. We can stay away from it. Stop for a lot. Yes, okay. Uh, you got just something normal, cold feet. You just get a little nervous. You get scared. This is something also. Uh... Cold feet, yeah, definitely. Um, both the brothers and the sisters, uh, they will suffer from this. And this is because... The closer that we move to doing something that is right, that is good with what God wants us to do, with what Allah wants us to do, shaitan is going to be there to kind of frighten us from it. He's going to be there to throw some fear into our mind, such that we're going to say, hold on a bit, wait, let's slow it down a little bit. Maybe she really isn't the right person. Maybe he's really not, I'm rushing or something of that sort. So the cold feet, it's natural, but at the same time we need to realize that it shouldn't stop us. As long as we're clear on the principles, the core uh, points that are the reason why we want to marry that person, 
and there's nothing that has been a major issue to prevent that from happening, the cold feet is something that's normal, it's gonna happen. It should in no way stop you from doing it. Yeah, we're coming to uh, the next point, instability. Uh, someone might have some financial, emotional, psychological, you know, always thinking about future plans and they're uh, not really thinking about this plan. Definitely, in order for someone to get married, they need to be stable and stable on all the different points that you mentioned. Why? Because you're now moving into a different stage of life. It's no longer you worrying about yourself or maybe living under the roof of your parents. This is now you starting your own family. And to do that, there has to be certain prerequisites, certain qualities and qualifications that are needed from both the brother's side and from the sister's side. And part of it is the financial, that you need to be able to take care of the basic needs. And of course, depending on what you're marrying or who you're marrying, um, the, the level of the economical, social status that the person came from, there's going to be some variations. But in general, if we're Muslims who are looking to try to fulfill our our innate needs of marriage and, and companionship, and we want to do it according to what Islam teaches us, then the basic needs, especially if we're talking about the young brothers and sisters who they want to go ahead and finish up with their education and so on and so forth, that we need to humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves, but there still needs to be that ability to make sure that you can take care of the basics so that you're not getting married today and then breaking up and divorcing tomorrow because you don't have money to pay for an apartment or to keep paying for the apartment or for bills or things of that sort. I'm not talking about luxuries of buying fancy furniture and jewelry and things of that sort, which are, are you know, materialistic luxuries, which aren't uh, real basic needs. Mm -hmm. She's want, she wants the Brad Pitt at the same time, the uh, Hafiz of Quran, and he wants the uh, uh, woman to be in hijab praying, but at the same time, supermodel, we get to a position where now really picky. You know, we got high, high expectations, high, high standards. What we got to say about this? Honestly, that's, that's one of the complaints that uh, the sisters are making more than the brothers, saying there's no good men out there, mm -hmm. and all the good men are taken. And the good men that are taken, they can't add second, thirds, and fourths to their profiles. But that's a different <laughs> thing. Um, but there are some issues with regards to, realistically speaking, of, of high expectations. You know, and this again goes back to the fiction of Hollywood and Bollywood and everything else that's out there that's of the beauty that people see and think that, you know what, I'd like to have that. Sure, I'd like to have that too, but let's be realistic. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to what you're looking for, there has to be the core qualities that really are going to mean, are going to be, part of me, the bread and butter of that relationship. Because when it comes to the physical things, yes, there should be physical attraction. She should be, you know, attractive to you. He should be attractive to you. But to at the same time look to have the best of all these different qualities in a person, there is no such thing as an ideal man or the ideal woman, the ideal uh, Muslim, the ideal Muslima. So we need to really look to put things back into a proper perspective if we're going to look to try to really be true to ourselves and at the same time have a fulfilling relationship with whoever it is uh, that this marriage is going to take place with. Now these are some of the eternal issues that one in, as the individual might go through but now you have some external issues with say the parents where the parents they want to pick the spouse. They're not kind of letting the their child or maybe it's not even a child now that the woman she's you know 24, 25, she's an adult, he's an adult and of course the parents should be involved in this, but how f far do you, and where do you draw the line where they're like, no, you're going to marry this girl, this guy from my village, from my town, who I pick, he's got to have that doctor's degree, three of them, four, PhD, whatever the case, but you get what I'm saying, how, we, how do we address this? This is one of the hard problems to deal with, especially uh, depending on certain cultures where parents are still very dominant in their children's lives, mm -hmm. where parents feel that they have all the say. And, you know, Islamically, we're supposed to love our parents and we're supposed to respect them. But at the same time, the parents are supposed to really recognize that they should be more interested in what's best for their kids. And the way that they may perceive the better person to be for their wife, uh, for their, a wife for their son, or a husband for their daughter, it may not really be what their son or daughter is looking for. So there really has to be a true sense of communication, a humbling between the two, so that this way they can look to make uh, the best 
thing happened for their son or daughter. 